Well, let me so ask you that. That brings up an interesting question I have. You know, there's sort of this debate where people talk about neuroplasticity. And then you have some people who say IQ is completely fixed. You can't change it. Some people say, well, there are some things you, you can, can lower it. You can lower it. Some, I've heard some people argue, I've heard some doctors argue that improving your short-term memory can improve your scores. But comparing that versus the neuroplasticity, the ability for the brain to sort of uh, form, I guess you would say new neurons, neuro, new neural pathways so that you can better improve behavioral patterns. That's a big part of what you do. So how do you, how do you as a person learn where to cut that off, that this is my proclivity versus this is what I want to change and I'm capable of doing that? Well, the problem is if you're introverted and you want to learn to to be more social, you have to learn it from the bottom up. <clears throat> you have to learn the micro skills that go along with it. It's very effortful to move your personality. And with IQ, you can raise there's there's you can think of IQ as breaking into two subcomponents. There's a kind of a rate of learning measure, which would be fluid IQ. And there's a, a measure called crystallized IQ, which is like an assessment of how much you actually know. You can raise your crystallized IQ by becoming more educated. So if you're if you if you want to get smarter, let's say, practically speaking, it's hard to change the rate at which you learn. No one's really been able to figure out how to do that. Mm. Um, you know, there are these companies that claim that if you do their cognitive exercises, that you'll show an improvement in overall intelligence. But my th my sense is the evidence for that is very weak. Right now. But but education does raise your crystallized IQ. And so I wonder, though, how much of that could be learning almost how to learn. For example, I never learned how to learn in school. I never really learned math uh, my entire 10th and 11th grade. I never opened a textbook. I spent four hours with a tutor who sat me down and said, OK, hold on a second. This is how you have to look at these numbers. This is how yeah. you look at trigonometry. And then I went. Boom, four sessions, and I was able to do what I hadn't done all year. Same thing with jujitsu or boxing or any kind of sporting endeavor or doing this show. For me, there's always a, a learning curve to the ability to learn that activity. So could that well, so imagine? Thing? Well, imagine that two people have an equally competent teacher. Okay, the person with the higher IQ will learn faster. Right. But if you have a good teacher, that's going to be helpful to both of you. So... Obviously, the manner in which material is presented is 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 of crucial importance. Right. It can be presented badly or well. I had the same experience with you when I was taking statistics in university. Mm -hmm. I was having a hard time with it, and I sat down with the tutor for about six hours, and you know he he laid clear for me a variety of things that I hadn't learned, mm -hmm. and, and made it very straightforward. So the and and there is evidence too in the in the teaching profession that conscientious teachers in particular, I'm talking about at the elementary and junior high and high school level, can have a marked positive effect on their students. Right. Um, although teachers tend not to be selected on that basis, which is really too bad because we do know how to select better teachers. Sometimes they're punished on oh. that basis. My senior English teacher, his <clears throat> grades were too high. It was really, his name was, um, uh, well, I, you know, he may not want his name being used in this show, so I won't use it. But I remember uh, he was very, very clear. This was my English professor in, uh, professor, teacher, senior year. You read a book every semester. Mm -hmm. You had a written test on reading comprehension of the book. You had to write an essay, a literary essay in the book. Then you had one oral, a persuasive essay, and then you had one other test that you do a written test that was more so a test on the English language, you know, writing skills. And then there was 10% of your grade that was simply writing every single day in a journal. That was it. You knew this every single semester. And I remember his first two semesters, all of his students were engaged. I mean, kids who typically were not engaged in class did very well. I think the average grade was maybe something like 85%. And the administration told him, your grades are too high. So he lowered them five points for the next semester just because they had him do that. That to me seemed like the, seemed antithetical to what a teacher should want to do. As a teacher, you should want every student to get 100% at the end of the year in a perfect world.